Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a review of the edge cutting built tool from No Go No Boo. Um, I got mine from Amazon for about £8.99 and I'll put the link in the description below and I'll put a couple of the US suppliers that I'm aware of as well because it's um, commonly um, available over there as well but I think it's about $17. This is my review of it and the other thing that I've done recently is I used to have a more basic wood burning tool so I've actually upgraded and I spend £14.99, about £19 with postage for this one. And this has actually got 23 different heads and they come in this little case. So there's 23 different types of head here and they've all got slightly different things. So if you did actually want to use this as a secondary craft and actually do wood burning stuff with it, it's actually really cool. So there's 23 different ones of these. The heads are actually much more easily interchangeable. Like I said, you get this lovely carry kit. Comes with a cutting blade as well. And um, metal ABT um, alphabet cutting die for your wood burning. Like I said, it's got all your information in there. It's got a three year guarantee. And it's also got these super cool really interesting heads and these are for burning like um certain designs into your actual wood but i think i'm going to try not today maybe but i'm going to attempt to see what sort of different looks i can get in the edges of my tails with these it's like it's going to be quite fun to play around with that compared to my more basic one where i think i only had six different attachments and like i said i didn't tend to use anything more than the straight edge and the pointed edge more pointed edge now I swapped out my head, I originally had this one and I've swapped it out for this more pointed version. Okay, and the other thing I like about this one is it's got a 30 watt temperature and a 15 watt temperature so if I'm cutting a lot of ribbon with it I can turn it up to 30 and be cutting lots of things at once but obviously if I want to keep it on for when I finish my bow and I need to do the last little minute little things with it I can drop it to 15 and then obviously turn it back up to 30 when I want to use it again so it's slightly less dangerous and I also like this stand because it's less flimsy than the plastic version that comes with the cheaper option that's from Hobbycraft so like I said I quite like that one paying a little bit more money was actually definitely worth worth it so I've got some ribbon and I've got this my cutter and as you can see on this one this is the more updated version and it's got the measurements so it basically tells you so this is three inch ribbon so it tells you if you line up your ribbon there which is your three inch guide that should be the perfect center for your, for your cuts so this is cord material so this is one of the thickest types of ribbon that i ever work with and as you can see, I've already cut a piece here because, like I said, I wanted to have a little play around and see what it was like before I went on camera. And the other thing you'll notice is I have got a tempered glass cutting board here, which you need if you're using this with ribbon. Like I said, this is to protect your um, ribbon and protect your desk and protect yourself. And also never, ever touch this. Just here, I my hand is here and I can still feel heat from that wood burning tool. And it's same about here still giving off heat in that direction from there so never ever directly touch that because you will burn yourself and it will be quite bad so like i said stay away from that area altogether the other thing i've, I've found when i was doing this if you don't keep pressure especially against this edge so you need to be holding it down really firmly the ribbon slips and it drags and you get like weird gathered areas so like i said make sure you keep a lot of pressure on it otherwise it's not going to work for you so like I said, this is my thickest material, and I do it like this. So you want to go down hard, keep pressure. I'm just going to go for it again because I know this one's thicker. And again, there, reset that on my... And there we go. We've got the perfect spiked point. So like I said, it is actually really useful. It's a really good tool. 
and it does work even with the thicker materials because like I said that is a nice thick that is about three millimeters thick compared to the normal sort of half a millimeter of standard ribbon so like I said it does even work on thicker materials the only thing I don't like is and it might just be UK in the UK we tend to have three inch ribbon two inch ribbon one inch ribbon occasionally we'll do seven eighths but like I said it's normally three two one and a half one um, with this one it's got three two and a quarter one and a half and seven eighths so like I said it doesn't have the one inch of that ribbon that I would normally use or the two inch so you sort of have to adjust it slightly yourself I might actually get my permanent marker and put the marks in myself and see if I can do it because as you can see this is two inch ribbon and I sort of have to settle it between there to get a decent guide I sort of have to I'd have to mark it at the top here in the middle and work out where to get my spike put in but <clears throat> the other thing I like this because obviously it's got the spike which is the main thing that I want to use it for because the only thing I can't do is cut and seal my spikes with the lighter I'm absolutely terrible at it which is why I always go for base bows instead so that was my main thing for trying to find this tool to see whether or not it actually works so this is the two inch ribbon was not my best cut as you can see it's dragged a little bit here and there so I might try and do a little bit lighter go a little bit slower There's less drag there there we go that is much better so like I said remember to go slow so you get nice clean lines and like I said it's also got these different edges here and again you meant to use these lines as a guide so this one would be the two inch so you meant to use that to line it up with the so that would be the two inch version there we go make sure that's on its stand and there you go you can get like a little it with this one and again you meant to use the guide to work out where to cut and obviously this is like lightning marks and you want to get really really close to the edge of the tool and like I said you want to make sure you've got pressure and they're here but not so close that you can feel the heat and there you go you can get a cute little funky design and then there's this wave one as well here and again you've still got that guide where you can adjust it to the correct size ribbon that you're using. Go slow so you're not dragging the ribbon and follow it round that curve and be sure to put it on the stand like so if you've got one of these versions 
And there you go, nice cleanly cut weave. Lightning edge. V cut or spike, depending on which way around you use it. Spikes and so on. <clears throat> Let's try it on one inch ribbon. I also made some of these templates for making edges with a Diet Coke can, so I'll link that tutorial below as well. So again, as you see, this is a bit over that 7 8 so like I said, it's making sure you're getting centred. Like I said, I'm definitely going to put some lines in for the wider ribbon sizes. Nice clean V. Let's have a look at the other ones. So it says here this one should be about there for the 7 8. Okay, it's an interesting look. It's not one that I'd personally use. It's like that. I wonder if I can use it to get. Mm. Let's see if I can do a curve. So you can play around and use the edges for different things and like I said it is good to have that guide if you've got the correct ribbon sizes for it but like I said let me just show you I'm going to purposely not keep any pressure so if you just laid it like this and didn't touch that or only held it here can you see how your ribbon goes it doesn't cut and it goes at very very strange angles just show you again so like I said, no pressure at all, or light pressure. It moves and slips around, so like I said, you rarely do. Like I said, as close as it as you, I know you're not going to get your fingers, so like I said, you want to be making sure that you're angling this up, so this is nowhere near here. So that pressure that pressure makes all the difference to your cutting obviously that one's not perfect but that was me rather than the actual machine so let's try again line it up properly There we go. Slowly, so there's no drag. Pop that in our holder. There we go, that's better. Nice and clean, and like I said, that's the difference that the pressure actually makes, so like I said, you do need to keep a firm grip when you're actually cutting. <clears throat> the other thing that I use for my straight edges, um, instead of using one of these edge tools, I have this metal ruler. And again, pressure is what this is all about. If you don't have the pressure, the ribbon slips and your line's not clean. See how straight that is? And the same if you wanted an angle. A nice straight clean
again that was me I didn't put enough pressure on the ruler there you go nicely sealed straight clean nice angled edge and like I said that's why using the metal bits is quite fun so like I said it is fun to play around with like I said remember that pressure is all the key to actually getting nice details like I said you can play around and have some fun with these like I said I do I did a few different ones off camera and they are quite pretty all the edges are nice and clean except for some like I said you can see where I let the pressure upon the template and it slipped around and like I said did some damage so like I said remember to hold it down nice and firmly and play around but like I said if you're not one that's going to concentrate and actually keep that pressure at all times and making sure your fingers are out of the way so you're not going to accidentally burn yourself if you are naturally clumsy I would not advise against I would advise against this because like I said if you're holding it like this you will do serious damage to your hands and like I said I don't want to be responsible for anyone getting any third degree, degree burns from their wood burning tool so like I said be very careful be very cautious keep your angles upwards keep your pressure firm and like I said it is an actual fun tool to play around with it is worth the 8.99 like I said I'm going to play around and see if I can get my spikes better because like I said I do like using them occasionally instead of my base bows it's just because I'm terrible at them so hopefully this will help and you'll see more of it in the future. So thank you for watching and um, hopefully you found this useful and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye!